Good morning, everybody. This is Dennis Orban with the Active Trend Traders uh, for the How to Make Money Trading Stocks webinar. We do this every Friday at 10 o'clock uh, in the morning, and we provide it for training purposes and also just to uh, provide uh, a glimpse into what's happened in the previous week and what we may be looking at going forward in the market. Both Mike and Michael will not be with us today um, due to, uh, well, Michael Michael is out uh, uh, actually playing tennis, or Mike is out playing tennis, and unfortunately Michael had to go to a, a funeral of a friend. So I want to remind everybody that all the materials we present here are for training purposes only, and traders should always paper trade any new method prior to the risk of their own personal capital. <clears throat> the Active Trend Traders, I very much am about uh, coaching, training, teaching. And um, this past week we did a really, uh, probably a very unique um, training about uh, dynamic compounding. Got some really great uh, responses back from uh, members who attended the uh, uh, the session and also those who've watched it online. And if you are an early warning alert uh, member or a premium member, you can uh, catch that training uh, on the website under training webinar or training videos. So this week we're going to be talking about the pros and cons of leveraged index ETFs. They have been uh, a very powerful uh, uh, trading vehicle. But there are some things that you need to be watching out for, especially if you're going to be trading the inverse index ETF. There's some specialities in those that uh, actually cause them to lose value as time goes on. So for very short term, oh, one month to, uh, out to 90 days, they can be very good uh, uh, trading vehicles. But uh, because of how they have to... Uh, uh, what they have to buy from the aspect of derivatives in order to emulate a uh, 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 inverse reaction to the uh, to the indexes, it can get a, a trader in trouble if they're not aware of what's going on with it. Uh, yeah, Jonathan, the uh, slides are up. Can uh, is everybody else be able to see the slides? How's that? Okay, great. There you go. And so, the, but anyway, uh, we provide a uh, midweek market sanity check, and that's our training period uh, every Tuesday evening at 6.30 Pacific time. If you want more information, you can email me at that email address. So last week, we were getting a we were going from oversold to even more extremely oversold. Uh, this week, uh, yesterday, today, uh, we've, you know, is it the start of a new uptrend or, or is it just simply a dead cap bounce uh, relief rally? Mike uh, Traeger and I were discussing that this morning. What we're seeing right now is more of a, a basically just a relief rally which is to be expected. Uh, we were talking about last week, the relief rally is well overdue. And uh, the S&P found support back at the October 2014 low, uh, uh, lows and has, in fact, been bouncing. So the NASDAQ, strong support at the 4,000 uh, point level. This is NASDAQ 100, not the composite. And it's the strongest of the, of the indices right now. The Russell remains in a bear market. It has found support just above the 950 level. However, it is the weakest of the indexes. And so I find it very interesting going into this week because everybody's looking for a reason why the market was selling off. Um, you know, the question is, is it oil? Is it China? Is it U.S. economy? Uh, you know, and as we get this, you know, brief bounce, the big question we have to ask is, has, in reality, has anything changed? Um, we have Europe that is basically saying, uh, hey, we need to do more accommodation. Therefore, uh, expect the government to step in with some additional stimu stimulus. Um, you know, the Chinese are trying to, to mitigate their uh, slowing economic growth, uh, slowing down to the 7 to 8% per year. Um, 
pace rather than the higher paces that it's done over the last 10 years. And then, of course, the, uh, the U.S. economy. And uh, everybody has an opinion on whether the U.S. economy is strong, is it better than it was, or in reality has the last eight years since 2007, or, yeah, since almost the last nine years, but, but anyway, since 2007, 2008, in reality, has the recovery that we've experienced in the U.S. been as strong as some of the ones in the past, or has government interference uh, kept a lid on what could have been a, a sterling uh, market recovery. Anyway, the market is currently <clears throat> the market is currently in a downtrend, but price action, remember, price action never goes straight up or straight down. So here's where we were last week. We were talking about this percentage of stocks above the 20-day moving average on the NYSC. We were getting down into extremely low levels. It has gotten further down than this, but this was last week. And sure enough, we did get down earlier this week, down into about 3.5% of the stocks in the NYSC above their 20-day moving average. That is extreme. And we're then getting now a relief uh, bounce out of that. We've jumped back up to 15.4% uh, uh, as of about 9 o'clock this morning. And uh, clearly, the uh, that oversold condition is being uh, worked off. Uh, to what extent it will be worked off, we will, we will see. And when we get to the market, uh, the index charts, uh, I'll diagram exactly what Mike and I are looking at uh, uh, moving forward. So here is a longer term uh, chart. This is the, and that should say 200 day moving average, but this is percentage of stocks above the 200 day moving average on the NYSC. This is a monthly chart. Um, last week it was sitting about 6.2%. This week uh, it has jumped up a little bit, although since this is a monthly chart, it has not, doesn't show it reflect as a bounce. What can we be looking at on a chart like this? We can be looking for a couple of things. One is repeats of, let's go back to 2008. What happened in 2008? Around the March time frame, uh, February, March time frame, we get a nice rebound uh, off on the uh, NYSE, but it also was reflective on the uh, NASDAQ and the S&P and, and also the Russell, but then that failed fairly quickly drop back down and these were the lows that were put in back in 2008 when we were in the bear market. Um, we have the Russell that is in a bear market. Uh, much of the European indexes are in fact off 20% from their highs of last year. So we'll see how this works out <clears throat> uh, moving forward. We And we'll get to the charts of the indexes. We'll see how it, the similarities between now and January 2008 are pretty unique. And so uh, we'll just be watching this. It is in oversold uh, conditions, and as you can see, close to some of the lows it's put in before. Uh, will, we, will all of the indexes slip into a bear market this year? Don't know, but... It, but as as we look at the charts, it sure looks like we've had two significant legs down, especially on the Russell. And uh, if we go a third leg down, uh, that will probably rip out the support on the uh, index on the S&P and the NASDAQ also. So here's an update on. Um, not a lot of changes from last week as we've seen the rebound because here's where we were uh, last week on the indexes themselves. And as you can see, the Russell has actually rebounded just a little bit. However, it stays mired in this below 20%. That is from the highs of 2015. That's where this measurement on the right-hand side is. And it also lets you know NASDAQ down or the Dow down Oh, about 12.67, 11% on the S&P. The NASDAQ 100 is down 10%. The NASDAQ composite, which is a, a much uh, more significant number of stocks, uh, actually dropped down to about 15% before doing its rebound earlier in the week. 
So let's take a look here at what the charts are telling us. Okay, this is the uh, S&P, uh, daily on the left, weekly on the right. And the thing I want to highlight isn't so much, the, okay, the price action this week is very good. We now have a very uh, um, well-defined level of support down here, just above the 1800 level, which corresponds to its lows from October 2014. And now it appears as if we are bouncing back up. The This is the Fib box that is drawn from this high, or basically this high here. Um, that's uh, December 29th, I believe, or December 30th. Yeah, December 29th. There's December 30th, 31st, and away we went. But it, it, this Fib box here uh, denotes the... 38.2% retracement up to the 61.8% uh, retracement, where we would anticipate uh, per Dow theory for this bounce to go, uh, that it would bounce back up into that resistance area and then uh, basically looking for it to stall in this area and reverse back down. What are we looking at to reverse back down? Is I want you to take a look, this is back Earlier, this is uh, uh, what happened uh, earlier in 2015 back in August. We had a huge significant sell-off. We get a rebound on the daily charts, and uh, it, it's more reflective over here on the weekly charts. We get a nice big hammer. That was on uh, the week of uh, uh, August 24th. And then the next one, two, three, four, five weeks, we go into a retesting process, testing the validity of this ham reversal hammer. Will that, will something similar happen in 2000, you know, uh, as we begin this year, where we get a nice little test, and then next week, the week after, and the week after for several weeks, we get some testing back in this area before getting a rebound back, you know, back up into, uh, try to move back up into a, a uh, uh, an uptrend. And then the final retest was happening in uh, about four or five weeks later in um, September, which corresponds to this bottom here. Now that second one, and that's one of the things I want to emphasize to folks, is the first lower low is not necessarily um, – the one we want to get in on, but it's the retest um, that that shows us that, okay, that low is going to hold as support. Therefore, we can be more confident in taking uh, long, you know, long trades in the, in the indexes, the SPY, the IWM, and the uh, QQQ uh, after we've gotten the retest down. Now, if this just launches up here, it makes, you know, without doing much of a retest, it makes the, the next surge up a little bit more suspect and, and um, uh, would add weight to this just being a, a dead cat type bounce. But a lot of things that we can see here on the weekly chart uh, are significant. One, the eight week moving average, which uh, between the eight week and the 10 week moving average approximates the 50 day moving average, has dropped below the 40 week moving average, which equ equivalates approximately to the 200 day moving average. So this would be considered what they call a death cross, uh, which tends to, to reflect more downside is coming. And so from a longer term perspective, what uh, uh, if we believe that this was the you know first leg down or first leg down up second leg down up third leg down and oftentimes a third leg down can be more dramatic then we would be looking for basically a rebound from this level here from this level here back up to uh, you know around the somewhere between the 1950 level and up here close to the 2000 level uh, it could make it, but let's just put it up here at the top of the um, the Fibonacci's, and then a reversal back down 
may get a little bit of a delay there, but a continued uh, uh, drop. And oftentimes what happens is that next leg down will be equivalent, it doesn't have to be exact, but will be equivalent to this leg down. So if we take this leg down from here to here, give us some kind of a projection on how much uh, that will be, and we take it back to our approximate highs, which I'll put about there. That gives us a downside target somewhere around 1700 to you know 17 uh, 1680, which is uh, which would be a, about right. And if we get down that far, how much will we will the uh, S and P be off? Uh, that would have been reflected to a about a 20 percent uh, move down. Now, if we reflect back on, get rid of that. If we reflect back on, well, what happened back in 2008? Let's switch over very quickly to the longer term um, chart. And this picks up back in 2008. And this is one of the things, this is the monthly chart. And it also reflects that we get a big downside in January 2008, but it rebounds the second part of the month and then sets itself up for actually what turned out to be uh, from the low of March back to the high of May. It actually ran up ran up about 14%. There, there's a very that that's a very important lesson to to be aware of is that oftentimes when the indexes move into um, either a bear market and or a um, significant correction, sometimes the counter trend bounces can be actually larger than you see when, when the market's going up. Because there was another one, that came, the counter trend bounce that came here in July, and it bounced up that time back up towards the, the eight month moving average, jumped up about 8%, almost 9% before it rolled back over and fell. And so just be aware, this is what the what we have going on over here. It looks very much like what happened back in 2008. And we'll see what happens the month of June, January closes up next week. We'll see how this month's candle finishes up. But it appears as if the true strength indicator, the momentum is slipping away and wants to fall some more. And so we'll see what takes place there. Excuse me just a second. So I, you know, I wanted everybody just to be aware of this aspect uh, back in you know, 2008, what happened then. And if, if the longer term eight month moving average does break below the uh, 20 month moving average, that tends to be a, a, an indication that uh, that uh, more downside is to come. On a longer term chart, things are looking negative. But there will be relief rallies along the way. Let's go on to the NASDAQ. NASDAQ a little bit healthier than the S&P. It has made a rebound today back above the eight-day eight-day moving average, and we will, you know, where is it likely to turn, run into resistance? Well, we've got this high up here about 4350 up to 4400. Uh, that's where we would anticipate it running into. Um, some resistance if we do throw, throw on a Fibonacci from the high in December to the low here we are very rapidly approaching the lower part of the Fib box which is a 38.2 up to the 61 and again that reversal area around the 34 uh, 4400 level is just slightly above the uh, 50 what would that look like? Well, what it would look like is, is basically we would push on up here and then the price action, once it got kind of peaked out, the true strength indicator may come up here close to the zero line, but we would start getting some stalling on the daily 
and also the weekly uh, chart where it would start stalling out and uh, and then that would be our clue that stand by and get ready um, to get short the um, uh, the indexes themselves let's see Scott says Barron's has an article by Liz informant of smart money is buying dumb money is selling indicates this is a correction not a bear market well at this point Scott it's too early to tell uh, it is a correction right now and uh, none neither the uh, neither the S&P nor the Nasdaq is in a bear market however the Russell is and a lot of the uh, markets around the world are also in a uh, in a bear market so uh, that's what I love about reading you know uh, people like like Liz in the uh, in Barron's and that kind of stuff because everybody is seeing the charts just a little bit different um, and and that's great but right now something that nobody can argue with hopefully is we are in still in a downtrend on both the Nasdaq and the S&P and the Russell and and it may very well soon be time to buy but uh, it's been our experience uh, um, it's been our experience that uh, buying that you know first lower low um, actually is a really dumb time to buy uh, because they tend to fail and so it's better to buy the second chance rather than the 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 first initial lower low because we want prices to prove themselves and even with the uh, even with the uh, SM, uh, in in the uh, Russell the Russell came down here put a nice hammer in earlier in the week momentum is starting to turn up both on the true strength indicator and the daily momentum the weekly momentum is still down and also the true strength indicator is also down However, from a positive side, we may be seeing some uh, true strength coming in here with a little bit of positive divergence. And so we'll see what transpires here with this hammer. The last time we had a hammer, we had a hammer here, but I want to go back a little bit earlier in the year. Hmm. Oh, here where we had, um, as you can see, we had a hammer back in uh, uh, August, or this is a, a September. And then we move back up to the ADM environment and it starts retesting. And this is a stalling type uh, uh, formation I'm talking about, is that basically it's trying to move higher, can't move that much higher, but then it pops back up, rolls over, and hits a, goes back above the 40-week moving average. But by that time, uh, by that time, the, um, um, we've had the, the death cross already uh, with the... Uh, uh, Eight and 10 day moving average crossing below the 40 week moving average are the uh, those moving averages crossing, which in turn resulted in this again at this point. And this is a point that, you know, I will. It shows up so much better on the we've had one leg down. We've had two leg downs. And typically we had this bounce up here. I would anticipate a bounce up here, but how far? Well, the bottom of this past uh, where we where it corrected last time would be a good target for potential to the upside. And so, no, Scott, that wouldn't be my buy signal on the uh, if we break the uh, uh, um, if we if we break to the upside. That would tell us that uh, that there is more strength. I would my buy signal will would then be a pullback to hopefully what would be a higher uh, higher low. And that'd be your first indication that the trend may have changed. Because right now, uh, on this particular, like if we take a look at the, let's take a look here just at the Russell really quick. Okay. Lower low, lower high, lower low. So when is this, uh, in reality, this downtrend here would not be reversed until 1,200 is taken out. Now, you may go into a short-term uptrend, which would look like this, where it would bounce up, pull back. If it comes back to a higher low, 
and then bounces up from there and takes out this. It would be in a short term uptrend, but it still would not have taken out this uptrend until this, uh, until that um, um, swing high was taken out. And so Jonathan. And so, uh, yeah, Jonathan, that, that is true that uh, typically better, stronger growth stocks will start their move prior to the market. And, um, and so, you know, and so that's one thing to be um, watching out for, and that's what we, we watch out for also. Uh, but we go back to, you know, the system of trading uh, based on moving back up above the eight-day moving average and then retest. And, that's, and at, at that, there are very few stocks that are in that position right now. So let's see, that takes care of the Russell. Any more questions on the Russell, guys? And so, yeah, Jonathan, my, my buying triggers would basically be uh, stocks that are, you know, that have moved back above their 50-day moving average, back above, above their, you know, 20 and their 8-day moving average. And then for strength, as it's pulling back on a low-volume pullback to those moving averages would be, uh, 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 provide a buying trigger. So, you know, path of, uh, the path of least resistance after looking at uh, the charts. Um, short term, up. Long term, I think the path, path of least resistance is down. Short term. And longer term. Now, when I say longer term, um, you know, out there, uh, this is based on what the charts are telling us right now. Uh, and um, and I recognize that, you know, out there, there are a lot of people who are what they call perma bears, and there's perma perma bulls. And um, and so it. Uh, the, uh, there will be opportunities to get in. And the thing about it is, is once we do start getting some solid bounces, then the market shows that it's ready to turn around. And uh, my point is just that initial surge up after a hitting a lower low is not necessarily, all that initially indicates to us is that we are moving into a relief rally, but then that relief rally has to prove itself before we, um, uh, can have more confidence moving into buying stocks to the long side. So how are we doing? Um, we uh, Here's uh, how we're doing so far uh, year to date. Strategy three, we've been selling premium against uh, our um, uh, leaps positions in the SPY and the um, Tesla. And we've collected this much premium so far uh, to date. We had a couple of losing trades earlier in the year, but we kept those really small. And so we, uh, it's nice to, I, that's why one of the reasons why I like strategy three, because it continues to provide a little bit of income as we work on paying down those leap positions. So as of the third week in January, the white line there is the projected that that would that would uh, equate out to a 40%, uh, which is my target on the active trend trading system. And right now, here's where we're we're pumping down here about uh, just a little bit over 12 dollars, uh, 1.2%. Um, and we'll see. And this is the actual was be the blue line. So what are we doing for uh, future presentation and events? Bam uh, monthly Bam meetings in San Jose. Early one alerts up have been updated and, and that has been posted to the YouTube channel and also to the website. I'm in the process of back testing downside trades with active trend trading system and early warning alert report will be out at the end of the month. We'll see if we're going to implement those in uh, the early warning alert system that would be trading the inverse index ETFs. And then uh, Mike and I are both working on uh, getting started videos 
uh, are in that we're basically those are in production. We're working on those. Where um, when when and while we'll sending those out to all members, but when a person does become a uh, member of the active trend trading or early award learning, you'll get that video and it'll help you get a jump start to get started. So with the active trend trading system, uh, it is based on the five pillars of active trend trading. Sharing what to trade and when to, when to enter, when to exit, what strategies to use and what to expect. I'm very pleased that uh, about the third week in uh, December, the active trend trading system took us to cash and has basically kept us in cash except for two small trades uh, that took place earlier in um, earlier in January. And so if the market does in fact turn around and go up into even a shorter term you know, uptrend, we have the cash to be able to start investing and in, uh, uh, building our portfolio of great growth stocks. And so the way I've done this, the three strategies is they're all built off of the active trend trading system. I anticipate floating some trial balloons in the basic options. I also sent out in last yesterday's uh, market update where the link is to look at the uh, the basic option um, uh, video on uh, on how we're working in and this only equates to 10% of uh, our total to uh, trading uh, capital. This is 20% over here and 70% is the stock and index ETF. This is not inclusive of the early warning alerts. So just real quick, here's what uh, members uh, receive with the active trend trading system, including text alerts. And if you are early warning, uh, um, not early, but active trend trading system uh, premium member, and you want to get these text alerts as long as you live in the, uh, um, you know, not overseas, but in the U.S., uh, drop me a note with your, uh, your, um, uh, mobile number and we'll get that updated. And then the early one alerts, same thing there. So just a reminder that uh, you know, for if you're listening to this uh, webinar, uh, I do invite you to come and, and join the Active Trend Trading uh, members, and uh, you can enjoy a 40% reduction off the regular uh, membership, and all about 60% off of the early warning alert system. You can see, find that at this website there. So with that, stand by because the Fed meets this week. And it'll be very interesting getting to hear what the Fed has to say about raising rates last month and then what's happened with the market this month. It's kind of interesting. So uh, keep your aid growing and trade wisely, trade profitably. And that's it for the uh, review today. Kind of, kind of a short one uh, with uh, not, ha not having Mike or Michael there to, to add their, uh, uh, their input. So at this point, if you want to look at some stocks, I am ready to look at stocks. Yeah, Kieran, no text alerts went out this week, except on the on the. Um, Except on uh, the, no, I don't think any uh, text alerts went out this week. Okay, so let's look at Starbucks. Okay, Starbucks. Starbucks is kind of interesting. Uh, looking at it in a longer term chart, it looks like it wants to, I mean, it is putting in a nice little, uh, a nice little, you know, start of a potential cup type uh, pattern or a dish type pattern. Uh, it has bounced off the 40-week moving average this week. It had earnings, um, actually got knocked down with earnings, uh, but then bounced back from them fairly well. As you can see, it has not broken back above the 50-day moving average yet, although it looks like it maybe wanted to make that turn. Um, Volume, buying volume came in nicely today. We are back above the, and and it, this is a really great example. Uh, who sent this to me? 
uh, Scott. A very good example is when you're starting to get these, what they call the uh, this moving average crunches, as you can see what happens is one of the moving average will tend to work as a level of resistance while the other ones are acting as a level of support. Now, if the, um, if, so this crunch or this squeeze on the moving average uh, can also uh, oftentimes be very indicative of a stock that has the potential to run. What is the upside potential if we get a breakout on, you know, the initial upside is about seven, uh, about 7.8%. Um, if we get a breakout above the 50, whoops. And so, uh, I would like to, you know, if if we get some retesting or if that 50-day holds, that's why I don't like to buy a stock when it's that close to a level of potential resistance um, because you get what you're getting to date. Now, once it breaks out above the 50 again, then or any retest back in those areas would be a potential buy signal for Starbucks. And Starbucks is basically coming up, hammering the lower portion of the zero line on the true strength indicator. And at this point, the momentum is still showing, even with the larger buying volume, momentum is still showing below the zero line, which tends to indicate that, that the stock is going to stay in a downtrend until it, uh, but right now it is, it is in a downtrend. Google. Okay, Google will get a nice bounce. Got have earnings coming up on on uh, Google on the first of uh, February. What we're probably seeing right here is a pre-earnings run, and so um, this close to uh, and Google may be one of the stocks. That the pre-earnings runs have been really really uh, shaky over the last uh, um, you know since uh, so far this this. Uh, First of the year, and part of that is because of the deterioration that has happened in the price of stocks. So again, looking at Google for a pre-earnings run, it may, you know, this is where since you do have a nice little broad uh, cap there, you may want to draw in some fibs. Just get an idea of where is, you know, potentially hidden levels of resistance. And we see that it is up above the 50. Uh, and so it's got a level of resistance here at the 61.8, which actually corresponds quite nicely to where it had uh, resistance before up about the uh, 760 level. What else are we looking at? Uh, Apple. Apple also has earnings coming up next week. So as you can see, it's, it, it too is in a, a uh, you know, pre-earnings run type mode. Uh, it has earnings on the 26th after hours, which is Tuesday of next week. And so watch from some nice volatility on that. Again, Apple is in a downtrend, but it's at the bottom part of that down, downtrend if, uh, uh, zone where we would anticipate a bounce, but with uh, earnings coming up, we'll see what what it does after that. <clears throat> That's one of the frustrating things about Apple and some of the other things is we're getting earnings coming up. See what happens in earnings if we can't break back above these uh, moving averages here on a weekly chart. That may be an in indication that hey, stand by to short this thing as we and I'll just pop this one up really quick. Those of you who saw Netflix had great earnings and all that kind of stuff. And then nice hammer put in uh, uh, after earnings. And actually after earnings, it had jumped up here really high, but then sold off on uh, the day after earnings, but came back and, you know, made a, a very large hammer. But it's been selling off the last two days. Uh, on significant vo above average volume. So again, watching what happens at earnings, and as you can see, it appears, like I said, Netflix appears 
as if the eight week moving average is going to cross below the uh, 20 week moving average which can give us an indication that you know stand by uh, to try to trade Netflix to the downside what else we got here PACB oh FLT Hold on a second take these in order so FLT fleet technology uh, real big uh, sell-off, cap, uh, capitulation type sell-off, moving back up again. Earnings coming up, and it's in a, uh, it is in a, uh, basically just a little bounce before earnings. And uh, we've got earnings on the fourth. Um, let's see what tra tra transpires with uh, uh, this move. It's got a lot of overhead uh, supply that it needs to get through, and. Uh, but you know the positive side is it is take you know it is put in a fairly large uh, bullish reversal hammer on the weekly chart, and so it looks like it wants to run back up. But again, be aware it it, it is in a downtrend, has sold off dramatically, and it needs to prove itself. Uh, uh, like uh, as we've seen, this is a lower low. This is its first venture above the eight-day moving average. That tends to uh, be the first test to start hammering things up. And if this is going to go back into an uptrend, what we look for is basically a move back up, like it's doing now, retest to hopefully either down to the same level or maybe a slightly higher low, and then a move back up, take out this high, and that puts it back on the mode of uh, 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 of going back into at least a short-term uh, uptrend. And every time it hits one of these moving average, I would expect to see it uh, uh, do some stalling. And keep an eye on the volume, because this is good, good buying volume as it has moved up. A -R -M. I think we did. Did we do Facebook? No, we didn't do Facebook. Facebook also has earnings coming up, I think, next week. And seeing, an, uh, seeing a, a uh, yes, it is next week for Facebook, you're seeing a very similar uh, uh, tune with a lot of these stocks. You're getting that bounce. And typically a stock, especially the growth stocks, will go into a pre-earning run somewhere between, you know, around two weeks to a week before earnings. And uh, sure enough, um, is about a week before earnings, you get a bounce back up. We've retaken the eight, which is good. Um, but now we're looking for what's going to happen next. It's got this overhead support, a res, uh, supply, in other words, resistance up here at the 100-day uh, moving average, the 20-day moving average, and the 50-day moving average. Remember, the slope has rolled over. And uh, similar thing here. The, the real proving factor is just waiting for it to get back up into those moving average to see if it stalls or if it pushes through. If it pushes through, then that changes your, your, at, your perception of that particular stock. Okay, please review calm ALRM. Are we doing time-wise? Okay, good. Okay, I am totally not familiar with ALRM. It is a low uh, volume stock. And so I would need to run this through, uh, and it looks like a newer issue. I need to run this through the uh, stock checkup on IBD. It uh, has put in a, a cup, went into a higher high here, but now it's, it basically is consolidating. It too is uh, consolidating prior to earnings. So <clears throat> at this point, it needs to do some work over here to let us know that uh, it does in fact want to, you know, want to take back off, which would be basically a pull back into the eight day moving average and then a roll higher. It has resistance here at the $17 level. Um, and so what does alarm do? Gregory, you're probably going to say it does alarms. 
alarm.com. Okay, home security, cool. <clears throat> Are they tied in with uh, Xfinity? Okay. Uh, da, 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 da. Yeah, let's see, am I missing any? Please do calm. I actually, calm has made it to my uh, my uh, list of, of stocks that I'm really interested in. Um, it has been holding up better than the market, clearly. But, it, well, uh, it's down about, oh, it dropped about 28%. But this $45 level is holding quite nicely. It looks like it's wanting to move back up. Um, been pushing up, tried to bounce higher. The, the great thing about it is the earnings are behind it. And so uh, uh, that that is, is quite interesting. It's doing a nice little consolidation here. Uh, it is a little bit, <clears throat> um, the wide swings is showing it's a little bit unstable because uh, we'd like to see a little bit more uniform where you can see the patterns a little bit better. Uh, but it's basically got a range right now from about, you know, like I said, from about 45 up to 52. And so um, yeah, depending on what the market does, if it retakes the 50, and, and the 50 turns back up, again, that's where we need to be patient, uh, and the 50 turns back up, that might be uh, an indication that it's time to, to jump back in. Again, as you can see, it re hit the 50, went above it, fell back. 50 was sloping down, hit the, the 100, hits the 200. It is it is living right now behind below the 200-day moving average, um, and so, it's, uh, but it looks like it's trying to stabilize itself. So, okay, let's see. It has been going down, it is now at a long term uptrend line. After it doesn't, doesn't something need to happen in the near future? Will the long term uptrend prevail or the short term? Yeah, Eric, that's something we're just not going to know about right now because right now, since uh, April of last year, that really isn't an uptrend. I mean, that period here is just a straight, you know, uh, moving sideways. Uh, longer term, yeah, you've got your uptrend going. <clears throat> and it needs to, you know, to reestablish the uptrend. Of course, it's got to take out this high right here uh, to reestablish that. Okay, uh, Malin, you got a uh, is O the ticker symbol? It is. Again, this is a dividend paying uh, play typically, and if I'm not mistaken, I remember this. This uh, it's it uh, uh, just takes care of uh, real uh, income property or, or rental property and that kind of stuff. Uh, it's a REIT, if I'm not mistaken. Is that correct? And so uh, I'd have to. I'd want to run the uh, uh, stock checkup on it. Uh, but as you can see, it is moving back up into uh, a level of resistance. And so you can anticipate either a pullback and or a breakthrough uh, uh, moving up to the upside. It was a great buy back in August or September. But right now it is, it is way extended away from its uh, weeklies. And uh, <clears throat> excuse me, it's breaking out here. Also has earnings coming up on the 10th. Home security. And Tracy, you got a question about FLT. <clears throat> uh, yeah, uh, on a weekly chart, it has broken. <clears throat> it has uh, moved back above the 8 uh, day moving average on the weekly. Uh, again, 
the first time it moves up and closes above it for aggressive traders they can you know they can look at taking that trade uh we would be looking at a um um uh, a retest either back down to the eight and so the midsection of that candle is a really good you know the 120 level uh what it does at that 120 level going forward is the big question um it too has earnings coming up on the fourth and so it's in a pre-earnings run and what we found is that once you come back up above the eight especially when you're in a longer term downtrend like this we're we're you know, we're calling it like it is, is that that this is long-term downtrend, long-term downtrend. What we expect is to move back up to these moving averages, either the 20 or the or the uh, um, the uh, 50, because we also now have the 100 going down, the 200 going down. And if you get into around that zone there, which is about the 130 to the 135 level, that's where we'd expect a reversal. back down to the downside. So, okay, folks, if there's no other stocks, oh, a couple of stocks that I'm keeping my eye on. Uh, one that was really interesting, it was, um, and this was on the IBD uh, leaderboard, actually, and it kind of, it kind of went south today and it looked like it was trying to build a nice little uh, consolidation. It may still be doing that, but it is now, <clears throat> see how it, it got up here and hit the 50 several times that 50 has worked as, as resistance now uh, uh, for several days. Uh, it got up here to the eight week moving average and again has turned over. And so it looks like even though, uh, I'm sitting there questioning myself if we, if it drops the 150 level, it's telling me that we've got earnings coming up and it's telling me on 210. And and if volume increases on these sell-offs, that's telling me somebody knows something uh, with regards to earnings. XRS. been seeing several of these little failure patterns like this where you get this initial little pop up uh, XRS it went, as a matter of fact the two trades that we uh, went with the uh, growth stocks this year we had a similar type of little pattern you get we got a little move up took the above the 50 took out you know the eight bought it on the pullback to the eight but then it failed uh, and so again we may get an earnings run on this but it has earnings uh, 127. And on earnings run, uh, I would I would expect you to do anything from um, five to probably ten, maybe fifteen percent on the earning runs uh, on the earnings runs, but uh, not much more than that uh, given the current market condition. PACB, which is bioscience, so I would need to run the um, uh, stock checkup on this. It has earnings coming up on. Uh, to two biotech companies around earnings seem to get really uh, uh, jumpy. It's got uh, what kind of uh, two million shares per day, which is good. It looks like it wants to spring higher. It is clearly above the 50, uh, and so. But then you've got currently supported about 12 and a quarter, 12 dollars. You got resistance up at you know thir almost 14. And you have earnings coming up. Longer term, the indicators are saying these are hanging men, which are bearish uh, candles. And you've got basically the uh, momentum on a weekly chart turning over. You've got uh, the true strength indicator also turning over, but it's doing these little dips and up, dips and up. Uh, but at one point, it's going to you know roll over. So it may be holding up just primarily right now. Um, right now it is holding up for potentially, you know, for the earnings and we'll see what happens from there. And Chris, I think we did Facebook, but I'll take another look at it real quick. Okay. Facebook. 
Facebook, actually, we got a nice sell-off below the 50-day moving average where it's kind of gapping down, uh, selling. And what's interesting about Facebook, it has earnings coming up on the 27th. Uh, I wouldn't jump into Facebook right now, uh, even for a pre-earnings run, because where am I expecting Facebook to go? You know, maybe back up to 100 before earnings. And then, uh, then earnings will happen on the 27th, which is next Wednesday after market. And then uh, we'll see what happens with Facebook after that. And so it's too close. It's too close to um, earnings for me to want to be in Facebook. And even for a pre-earnings run, and the reason why, why I don't want to be in a pre-earnings run is it's dropped too far away from the moving averages. And so that's kind of, uh, if it moves up, it would be moving up right into the moving averages. Uh, and so I think those are going to provide resistance going into earnings. So, okay, folks, I'm going to call it a day. Um, thanks for joining us today. And uh, just hang in there. Continue to be patient. Um, we can't, again, I am not in a hurry to buy this first initial lowest low, lower low. Uh, I want to let things prove themselves a little bit. And then we'll, uh, and once they prove themselves, we're going to either go one way or the other. We'll either go short because it's pulled back up into a resistance level and failed and stalled out. Or if we get a retest, a healthy retest, and, and the, the lows hold, we'll be going long. So... And so, yeah, Greg, to answer your question, um, uh, on our regular active trend trading system, uh, I do, well, we do, I wouldn't call them swing trading as much as trend trading, both stocks and the ETS. So, okay, everybody, have a great weekend. Uh, God bless everybody.